page one of the addendum for probability. Um, Ruba and Hania play a game in which they take it in turns to select a card with replacement from a well shuffled pack of 52 cards. The first player to select an ace wins the game. Ruba has the first turn. Find the probability that Ruba wins on her third turn. Okay. So basically what that means is that Ruba does not select an ace on the first two turns and neither does Hanya. Uh, so that means that, um, let's see, it would be first turn is Rubia, right? Because Rubia has the first turn. Then Hanya, then Rubia, then Hanya, then Rubia has her third turn. So she's going to win, right? So it's going to be lose, 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 and then win. Uh, are they replacing? Yes, they're replacing. So the first time, uh, let's see, they have to win a, to select an ace to win the game. How many aces are there? There's four aces in uh, a deck. So um, the chance that Ruba loses on the first turn would be she chose a non-ace out of the 52. So that would be uh, 48 out of the 52 that she chose. And then uh, Hanya afterwards also drew one of the 48 non-aces out of the deck. And that happened every single turn until Ruby actually won. And since it was with replacement, they always put the card that was chosen back into the deck. The fraction each time was 48 divided by 52. Finally, on the third turn for Ruba, she chose one of the aces, so that was one of four cards out of the 52. So, uh, A1, you would find the probability by multiplying all these fractions together uh, and multiplying them. So that would give you 48 to the fourth divided uh, times 4 divided by 52 to the fifth. Okay, and that is the answer for A1. If we want to find a uh, fraction for that, uh, I think it's helpful to maybe reduce. Uh, so remember that um, 52 uh, is 4 times 13. So we could change this to 13 to the 5th, and we could change this to 12 to the 4th, and we could change this to a 1. So it would be 12 to the 4th over 13 to the 5th. 12 to the 4th divided by 13 to the 5th. And we can change that to a fraction. Oops, it's too small, okay? So it will be 0 0.0558 about. Let's look at A2. So that the probability that Ruba wins prior to her n plus 1th turn is this. Okay, what did we do in A1? Did we figure out the probability that Ruba won prior to her 4th turn? Not exactly. We found the probability that she specifically won on her 3rd turn. So uh, we do need to find other um, terms to add them together to the winning on the 3rd turn to equal the probability that she won on her fourth turn. Why don't we see what that looks like? So, for example, what's the probability that she would win on her first turn? It would be uh, 4 out of 52 or 1 out of uh, 13. Uh, what is the probability that she would win on her second turn? Well, first of all, she would have to lose on her first turn, which is 12 out of 13 then Hanya would have to lose on her first turn, which would be 12 out of 13, and then Ruba would have to win on her third turn, which would be 1 out of 13, right? And then um, the, uh, the, the other um, term would be the one we already calculated, which would be 12 over 13 to the fifth, or fourth, sorry, times... 1 over 13, and that is the probability that uh, she would win on
on her first, second, or third turn, with at which n equals 3. Now here I've written it out for a, um, a sequence with n equals 5 because it's a little bit easier to see the relationship between 5 and the 6 here when it's a 5. So right now I have four terms or four turns. This is what's the, what's the probability she would win before the fifth turn. So uh, one thing to make it a little bit easier is I'm going to uh, identify this as a geometric sequence, a geometric series actually, because it's being added together. And I'm going to tell you what the U1 and the R values are. The U1 is obviously 1 13th because it's present in every single term. The R value uh, is a little bit tricky because in this case, um, do you see that each uh, term in the sequence is being multiplied by 12 13th squared? I multiply each one by 12 13th squared and then it goes from an exponent of 2 to 4 to 6, right? So my R value is actually 12 13th squared, okay? And now I'm going to replace all my R values with, uh, or all my 12 13th squared with an R, with an R. So I'm going to have 12 13th R to the 0 plus 1 13th R to the first, right, because 12 13th squared is actually the value for r, 1 13th r squared, because 12 13th squared squared is 12 13th to the fourth, plus, etc., right, all the way to the last term, which is going to be, oops, sorry, it's going to be r to the, and in this case, uh, it would be r to the third, and remember that this was uh, to calculate the probability of the, the probability that she would win before the fifth turn. So this is with four terms. It looks like that, right? And so the, the, remember that the geometric series formula says uh, that the, um, The, the sum can be calculated with this formula here, okay? So the U1 in this case is 1 13th. The R value is 12 13th squared, right? So I'm just going to put R for now. And then for N plus 1, it's the 4, because we're doing it with 4 terms, it would be, uh, and this is our small n, right? 4 terms would actually be small n minus 1, so big N plus 1 would actually be small n minus 1 plus 1. So actually this would be N here. Okay, R to the N. And the bottom would be 1 minus R. Okay, and now we're going to put our R value back in. So our R value, when we put our R value back in, it, the top is going to be 1 minus 12 13th squared small n, and the bottom is going to be 1 minus 12 13 squared, right? And now I'm going to simplify a little bit. The bottom is going to be um, 13 squared minus 12 squared divided by 13 squared. I'm putting both over common denominator and subtracting. Top is going to be 1 13. This is going to be 1 minus 12 13 divided uh, to the 2n. And now let's simplify the bottom. So the bottom is going to be 169 minus 144, uh, which is going to be 25, divided by 13 squared. And the top is going to be um, 1 over 13 times blah, 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 okay, that thing right there, and now I'm going to cancel out one of these 13s here, and then I'm going to end up with 13 divided by 25 times 1 minus 
12 13 to the 2 10. Okay? And I think that matches with what we wanted. Yes, it does. Okay, that was pretty terrible, wasn't it? Just going to shrink this down. All right, now A3. Hence, find the probability that Ruba wins the game. Okay, so in this case, uh, what we're going to do is we're probably going to take the expression, this expression, and we're going to say, well, what happens if we take this to infinity? So we're going to not say, oh, what's the probability that Ruba wins by the n plus 1th turn? We'll say, what's the probability that Ruba wins someday? Okay, so that would be, let's put infinity in for for small n, and then um, we'll get 13 divided by 25, 1 minus 12 13, which happens to be a number that is slightly smaller than 1, which is important. And we're going to put infinity in for n. If you take a number that is slightly smaller than 1 and you multiply it together an infinite number of times, you're going to get 0. So basically, uh, if Basically, what you're doing is you're saying the limit as we put infinity in for n, it's equal to 13 25 So just the advantage that Ruba has for starting first, she has a slightly higher chance of winning the game than Hanya does, right? Okay, so that was the answer for 3. B, if Ruba and Hanya play this game seven times, find the probability that Ruba will win more games than Hanya. Hanya. Um, so in this case, let's see. Uh, the probability that Ruba is going to win is 13 25ths, right? And so probability that Ruba will win more games than, than Hanya is the probability that Ruba wins four of the games, five of the games, six of the games, or all seven games. Okay, so um, the probability that that Ruba can win all seven games would be thirteen twenty fifth to the seventh. Okay, the probability that she would win uh, six of the seven games uh, would be thirteen to the twenty fifth to the sixth, and then. 12 25th to the first, okay, because um, there's Hanya would have to win one of the games, okay, and then Ruba would win six of the games. How many different ways are there for Ruba to win six of the games and Hanya to win one of the games? Basically, there's seven different ways, right, because Hanya could win the first game, the second game, the third game, blah, 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 all the way up to the seventh game. There's seven different ways for Hanya to win one of the games. So that you would have to multiply that times seven because there's seven different orders that uh, Ruben and Hanya could win six uh, versus win one. Uh, and then we would need to do the same thing for uh, uh, Ruba to win five times and four times, right? And it turns out that uh, the coefficients that we need to multiply each time here and here are the Pascal's triangle coefficients. So I am going to um, use the Pascal's triangle coefficient uh, combinations formula. So it would be, uh, this would be 7 chooses um, 2, and this would be 7 chooses 3 to figure out what the coefficients are in that case. So the 7 chooses 2, you could figure out by doing 7, and then I'll go to 10CR, 2, and that gives me 21. And then 7 chooses 3 would be 35. So this would be 21, and this would be 35. 
Okay. Uh, so, um, if you want to find the exact number, all you need to do is multiply all these out. Um, I'm not going to do it here because I think this problem is a little bit premature. This problem here is actually solvable using techniques we're going to learn in the binomial distribution chapter, uh, the discrete random variables chapter. So I think uh, if you don't understand this part perfectly, that's fine. Don't worry about it. Okay. Uh, and don't try to solve it some other, you know, way by listing everything out unless you, you would really like to because we're going to do that when we get to the other chapter and um, we'll spend a lot of time on it then. Number 10. The robot C-3PO stands on the edge of a cliff and takes random steps either toward or away from the cliff's edge. The probability of three... Oh, actually, I thought it was C-3PO, but actually they made, they made it different. It's 3PCO. Okay, the probability of 3PCO stepping away from the edge is 3 fifths, and toward the edge is 2 fifths. Find the probability that 3PCO does not step over the cliff in his first four steps. Ah, so he stands on the edge of a cliff and takes random steps either toward or away from the cliff's edge. Okay. Um... How many steps away is he from the edge of the cliff? I guess he's one step away, right? If he steps, one, if his first step is in the wrong direction, he's gonna die, right? Okay, so um, so that would be basically what they're saying is if he has more steps toward the cliff than away from the cliff, he's gonna die. And so if he has more steps away from the cliff than toward the cliff, then he will live. So what are the ways, uh, ah, and he definitely has to do it in the right order too. Okay, so let's let's write down the different ways that he could stay alive. Um, let's say that uh, toward, we'll say T, and then uh, away is A. Okay, so if we say toward, then the, if he if he said if he goes toward on the first step, then he's dead. So the first step has to be away, and then uh, and then he could do toward after that, but then he definitely has to do away again. And then if he wanted to, he could go toward again. Okay, so um, he could also do away toward. Uh, away away right he could do away away toward toward he could do away away toward away he could do away away toward oops away toward are those all the possibilities? Toward, 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 away. Oh, away, 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 away. Okay. So, here we have four steps away. Here we have three steps away. Here we have two steps away. There's these two possibilities. Toward, toward, and toward away, and then we have the one step away, and then toward, toward, away, away. Yeah, I think these are these are the one, two, three, four, five, six ways that three PCO could survive. Right, his first step always has to be away, and then after that, um, he needs to do his steps toward and away and an order such that he never ends up stepping off the cliff. So I think this is it. Okay. And uh, so let's see. There is um, one way in which there are two A's and two T's, and that would be uh, to away is um, three-fifths. So it would be three-fifths squared, and then two-fifths squared and and then there are 
Oh, that's there's another way here. There's one way there. There's there's there this one too. Okay, and the other ones all have um, at least three aways, right? So three aways. There's this one. There's this one, and this one. Uh, so here there's two. Here there's three aways, and when you have three aways, then it would be three fifths cubed, and then one t, which would be two fifths to the first. Okay. And then finally, there's one where there's all four steps are away, and there's only one way to do that. So it would be three fifths to the fourth. Okay. So if we wanted to add those up, we could just uh, put those in the calculator and add them. Okay, and that'll give you some number. So multiplying these, these out, 3 times 3 times 2 times 2 on top would be 36 times 2 divided by 625, which is 5 to the 4th on the bottom. 3 times, nine, uh, 3 times 27 times 2, which is 3 times 54 divided by 625. And the last one would be 3 to the 4th is 81 divided by 625. So we could add up all those um, numerators. It would be 72 plus 3 times 54 is 162. And then 81. 315. So that'd be 315 divided by 625. And that could, uh, we could like reduce that, right? We could divide 315 by 5 and we get 63. We could divide 625 by 5, we'll get 125. And so our answer would be 63 divided by 125. Let's go to the last problem, which is in 24K, which is a, uh, section which is not in the black book. So um, basically we worked on this um, in the counting and binomial expansion unit. Remember that we worked with permutations and combinations. And basically the, different, the difference between permutations and combinations was that permutations involve ordering of objects and combinations involve selection of teams or committees or things like that. So that was just a really quick review. Number one, a committee of four is chosen from 11 people by random selection. So we're like, okay, we're already thinking combinations, right? Two sisters were amongst the group from which the selection was made. Find the probability that both sisters are chosen for the committee. Okay, so we're gonna have a fraction and the bottom of the fraction is all the ways that we could have um, the committee of four chosen from 11. And remember that this is choosing a team or uh, committee, so we're doing combinations, not permutations. The order doesn't matter. So basically, it's 11 chooses four. Now, uh, for the numerator, basically, you got two sisters, sister one and sister two, and then you got nine other committee members that are not sisters. And we are trying to fill uh, the committee of four now with the two sisters. Okay, they're definitely going to be on the committee because we're trying to find the probability that um, the committee includes both sisters. And, and then the other nine committee members are trying to fill the other two seats. So in this case, the numerator would basically be nine chooses two because... Uh, the two first seats are filled with the sisters. So let's see. Um, we'll have nine chooses two. And that gives us 36. So that's our numerator. And the denominator, 11 chooses four, is 330. And so now we can maybe cancel that out. So I'm going to factor the top. 36 factor is, is like 6 times 6, or 3 times 2 times 6. The bottom, 330, is 3 times 110, which is also 3 times 2 times 55. Then I'm going to cancel the 3 times 2s here, and I end up with 6 divided by 55.